What kind of milk were you? What kind of life did you live through? If you saw my video about milk, you know I found it because I scrolled through Steam a lot. Same thing happened with what we're talking about today, which is milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. Which, for simplicity, I will just call milk. Two. Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk is a sequel to Milk, once again made by Nikita Krukov. It follows the same girl from the first game as we talk. The first thing I noticed about this game is holy shit, the pixel art is great! It's a massive step up from the first game, but then again, that's not a hard competition. The game is fairly short, really only 40-ish minutes if you're just doing a basic run, but if you do everything, it'll take longer. So let's do everything. The game starts with an animated intro, which I am just going to let play because it's really good. After that, we get a cutscene of the girl going into her room before she freezes, and mom appears. After she appears, she stabs a needle into us, which causes us to vomit milk, before she makes us say to never drink milk again. We're then showing the girl brushing her teeth, talking about how she used to love the last minutes for sleep. She reads through her pills before realizing she doesn't really know what they are. She examines them before deciding to not take them. She instantly feels better and wants to brag to someone. So we appear. She greets us before we say she should go to sleep. She didn't want to, she says she feels in control. We wonder why she's so happy, especially after what happened a few hours ago. We try to bully her, but she says that won't work, she just wants to have some fun. We wonder how long she can last in control before she starts to doubt herself and cry, so we tell her to wash up and take her pills. After she takes them, she lies down, just staring at the ceiling. We ask if she wants to talk. She says no. We ask what she wants. She wants to lie down for a bit. She continues staring at the ceiling, trying to get her thoughts in order. We say to try and imagine your thoughts as small, swarming creatures like cockroaches, before she changes them to fireflies. She talks for a minute before she gets tired of the fireflies and says she hates them, which causes them to scatter. We tell her unstable behavior makes her look bad. She says she doesn't care. We ask if that bothers her. She says she shouldn't. I say no. A lot of people act like this. We say there's no shame in snapping at someone if you have a reason. And we ask her if she has a reason, which she doesn't say, so we say she'll get better. We tell her she should just give up about the fireflies and go to bed. She says we should help find them. 
but it could be anywhere. She asked if we'll help. We asked what she was thinking Lina for. She asked what that could mean, considering we know better than anyone else. That's the thing. I have no idea. This is weird. I died and felt something. We asked if she'd tell us. She asks about what? She asks us to help look for her thoughts before she can go to bed. We say we don't know where to look for them. She doesn't either. We suggest moving stuff, but she says she'll feel bad if she moves anything, so she suggests we play in a style of a point and click. She says this works because she'll just end up overthinking and crying. So here's the point and click part of the game. There are 16 interactables, but only a few have fireflies. When you click on an object, you either get a story or some dialogue saying nothing is there. Also, this is here. A lot of these are short, but there's two long ones that have achievements. The one we're going to focus on right now is the laptop. Oh, <laughs> 
Also, here's the backstory. After you search a few items, a button that says finish search appears. You can click it if you want to move forward with the story. When we click it, it says she's gathered her thoughts but doesn't know how to feel, so we suggest stepping outside to get some air, which she doesn't seem happy about, but we convince her. We see the girl lying on the railing. She talks about how big the place is while the camera pans up. We notice she's scared, but she didn't say. But we can assume it's what's above her, which is a dark hole. She says she thinks the whole world is crazy. Like it's trying to make her believe in something that doesn't exist. She says it's weird, but it makes her a bit happy. Because everything's made for her. She's not so crazy after all. She says she still hasn't come up with a code word yet. We say since she remembers, she doesn't need a code word. 
She says she wants to remember things when she wants to remember. She says she made a promise. She knows it says from this moment on, every word will bring her pain. And she imagines falling. She hits the floor, smashing the pieces. This is my second death for today. I died again and felt nothing. We go back inside and she says she's tired. Also, their time is running short. Because she's not going to take her pills anymore. She wants to ask a favor but is nervous something bad will happen. So she lies down and tells us how she almost died. She then asks us to tell her a bedtime story. We don't and tell her to go to sleep. We're on some street now with colors that resemble the first game. We hear a voice speak and turn to find the boy. Thank <laughs> you. 
So the girl heads to the store with Tresca when we see a sign that says we only have 20 minutes. We head inside and get lost. Tresca runs off to ask someone for milk and then gets scared of a big man. We ask what the man said, then Tresca throws a fit before running off. We get the milk and find Tresca at the register. The cashier asks if Tresca is ours and just to leave him home next time before making us pay an outrageous fee, which we angrily pay. We walk back in silence before Tresca randomly asks us if we like ice cream. We say no before he runs ahead of us. The girl wakes up crying. She looks outside to the hole in the sky. And that's the game, thanks for watching. Ending one, that was ending one. We still have four more. You might be wondering how to get these other fireflies. It all depends on how many fireflies you get. So it's the two other factors. If you remember a few minutes ago, there was something called a first and second death. If you get the first death, you get the ending we just saw. But if you do these in different orders, you get other ones. So let's go over them. The something follows someone waking up in the cramped room, and when they try to leave the room, it expands. They hear someone outside, and they rush to leave. They make it outside, and run for a bit, before a creature comes up and kills them, which takes them back to the beginning the room, before the girl wakes up crying, and looks to the sky. My interpretation of this is that the girl feels like she's going nowhere. Even when she makes progress, she just ends up right back at square one. The ending follows someone who's been at this big rod of stairs for a while. Not much really happens in this ending, she feels like she's going insane and there's multiple pillars. She does wait!
The ascending is pretty simple. The girl stares in front of a mirror. She talks about how her face looks stupid, but she doesn't really care. But then again, she doesn't want to be branded a loser as well. She then chews herself up before her mom calls her, before it cuts to black. She then shows back up again, a little deformed, and saying what she said previously. And then shows a few more versions of these before it cuts to one with no face. She seems pretty happy with this one, even though she has no face. And then cuts the black one more time before it shows a backward shot of her. She then wakes up and looks at the sky. My interpretation of this is that she's self-conscious of her looks and would only feel better if no one saw her. You're gonna need this piece of paper, by the way. This ending follows the pixel art version of the girl texting a pizza place about her problems, mainly that she feels meaningless in the world. This ending is kind of funny, cause it's like, yeah, I don't feel like I belong in the world. We now have two hot and ready pizzas if you sign up for our promotional deal. She eventually gets to a train track where she sees a sign, and then wakes up. And that's all the endings. Before I talk about my thoughts on the games, let's talk about the music. The music in this game is pretty good. A lot of comp step, boss, a lot of intense track. So here's my favorites from the game. This game, despite being short, is really good. It's got good art, good music, and good writing. I hope there's a third game, but I'm not going to get my hopes to about it, because I don't really know where they can go from here. But if they do come up with something, that would be cool. That's all for now. See ya. Grocery list goes on I, BC Warfare, humbly submit a toast to Nikita Kurkov for successfully making a video game. Enjoy your $9, Nikita. It sure was worth it. <laughs> One wish that I can't pretend I don't wanna see come true I know it wouldn't make a difference If you thought of me as much as I think about you But maybe it's deliverance
from the pain I know is coming on when my old soul's finally gone. It's not wrong to think about it, but I'll stop for tonight. Cause we're immortalized forever in the songs that we write, you know?